this handheld and right here this is my small lathe uh, my lathe master uh, I'm kind of doing a quick video today about uh, about the uh, you know about modified which I have done this uh, quick change tool this is my lathe master which you see this is an AXA size block I'm going to walk up to my Grizzly. You'll have to kind of excuse the mess in the shop I've been working. I'm modifying and working on me, uh, my tools. And this is my Grizzly. Uh, you've seen several pictures of my Grizzly here. And this here is my BXA block on my Grizzly. I'm going to kind of crank it back. And you've seen me modify the tools. And I'm going to kind of just hold up. This is a three-quarter mil. And over here in my, my little mill is a dovetail cutter. The way that I cut my dovetails in. Okay, so we're going to walk back down here and I'm going to hook you up to uh, my uh, magnetic mount and we're going to get here on the workbench and I'm going to do a little bit of a little presentation, I think, I guess is a good way of putting it. Excuse me just a minute and I'll be right okay this is this is the presentation I, i'm i've got uh th this is the tools at this time i have gotten modified for my grizzly uh, this is a ddjnr 164 this is a kind of metal holder for a uh, dnmg insert i don't have any of these inserts so this had the holder this time See, and you notice this dovetail, and it's got the quarter 20 that I've drilled into the, and Loctited. it. This is a MCLNR-164, which, uh, which is basically uses your uh, CNMG type insert. Again, you can notice it's been cut off and dovetailed. Again, I'm going to stack them back up. And these are all for the, these are all done for a B. This is a DVJLR. 160 uh 163 it uses the smaller or it uses the d insert and see this is actually if you'll notice this is an inch and a quarter holder all these others are inch this is the one i had a little trouble with in my earlier video i had to weld up so it's been machined on a little bit more than normal but again and this is i had this made up but it's still it's the same principle direct mount I bought this tool on eBay and I've shown it a couple of times. I'm using my welding table, by the way. And I've done this one this weekend and I think it may have been showed. And this is this is SNMG holder and this is a three quarter. And I'm going to use this one for chamfering. And then this one here is a left hand I got, basically, a give to me. I think it might have been the trash bin at work or something. And it's a trigon. And it's a left hand, and you notice the dovetail. So I can, I'm going to actually come in this direction on the block. I will go back in a few minutes, excuse me, and show you how these mount on the machine. Okay. Now, I'm going to kind of move the camera over. And these are the ones for my A size blocks. Now, I, this is the, the first ones I did. I've done a lot of different things trying to work. This is basically the same holder as this holder here, except it's an A-size block. And it's a three-quarter holder. And I've done a lot of different things. I have welded onto the front and experiment. And this is the very first one I did. With these beat, these I have to, I had to weld the nuts on because you see how thin this area here is. This is a trigon, just like that one. In fact, I sent one of these to Greg Halligan, and this got knocked off in the mail. Again, welded on. Actually, I done one, and he done a video on one just like this. I found, purchased on eBay, and done. And then here's another one. This is another. This is a DNMG holder, and. 
I need to find me another one of these, and I'm going to write this number down or take a picture of it because I'd like to cut me one, another one down for my grizzly because I don't have this size. I mean, I have one that's cut down, but I'd like to have a direct mount. And then this is another one like that holder there. Again, it's, and you see, again, I welded these and just took, because it's the only way to get that thin area because it's just hardly, it's just not quite enough. You could barely get it in there. Probably could have, and no, yeah, just barely. I could have done it, but it would have been really tough. So, the, you know, so basically what these holders were modified for was, you know, A, these ends are, you know, if you heard me explain this, but the thing about it is, sometimes on eBay, or like John, what, uh, John Mills, who's, who just, who basically posted a picture of this, John had found a holder and you know, in England, they call them car boot sales. You know, here in America, we call them flea markets. And basically what John had done is he found a holder that used, it looked like, to me, it was looked like a one of these. It looked like something similar to this, uses 432. And he basically milled it down. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the... You're going to excuse me, I'm going to bring you right over here. And I'm going to set you on the lathe here. And th this is to show you, you know, again, you, this is nothing new, but I'm just doing a quick video to kind of, for the people who hadn't seen this before, and because of the machining YouTube deal, I really just kind of want to get it out there so that it would be seen. So I'm just kind of showing you, uh, basically, then we'll walk over to the Grizzly and do the same thing. See, these just fit, these just fit right on your block, lock just like this. And you see it's very rigid. You see I've got your really good view there, that's the C&MG style. These are the four I've got for this lathe. You see, if there is some rock or a little bit of air, the, see the rock will take it up. So, question of rigidity has been asked by several people, and you'll see that's fairly rich. And you know, sometimes you get a little happy with the, the, the. These have been. I really learned more on these holders than I did on any of the others. So you see how well, that's like I said, how well that locks. I didn't even cut these off. Now, I'm going to basically do the same thing. I'm going to carry you up to the Grizzly and I'm going to put you, match you on the Grizzly and come back and get those other tools. And we'll kind of show you about how that, the same deal here on the Grizzly. And, uh, and like I say, this is just going to be a kind of a quickie video. I'm going to basically focus you in on the tool block. Well, let me tighten this the nut on the top. I use a mag base to hold my GoPro, by the way. It's not no... Uh, it's a, it's a, it, it, it's, I'll, I'll show you when I take it off my, my rig. But there it is. Now hang on just a minute. I'm going to walk back and carry it off one time. And I'm going to kind of do again, do enough to show you what, you know, a real up good and close. The people who watch my channel regularly, they see me. This is probably my favorite tool right here. That's my favorite tool. I use CNMG a lot. See now, you notice how rigid, how that's mounted right up the block. Locks right up. Just uh, for example, this is the uh, one. This is actually a, a charge block and the traditional small hobby insert a lot of guys use. The thing that I've always said that I can buy the insert that I just put on a CNMG 
on eBay as cheap as I can buy these and get four corners. It's just a matter of economy. I mean, I'm buying quality insert. This is my chamfering tool. I haven't got to, I got to add some uh, extra mounts. See, and it does rock. Now, I centered these tools. See, it just locks right up. See, you've got it mounted on the dovetail just as firm as you can. You can take as heavy a cut with this as you can with any other tooling, standard put on tooling. Like I say, I always check my center depths on these. See, there's the, uh, there's the VNMG. And uh, then this is, this is the uh, uh, Trigon. And you see, I set my machine up and my background CNC lathe machining, basically hard turning. I set my machine up so now see I can machine in, in this direction, in this direction with one tool. This will work just as well left handed going in this way as it would right. So that's why I decided to do it. So I have some trigon inserts to use up. This is the uh, DNMG that, there. So you see all these lock fit right up good. I've got to make some more uh, mounts. These are going to be set up on top of the lathe for the time being. Now I have one more right hand trigon here. This is usually what I start with. This one here come off of eBay. And I usually just lay it out and then put the dovetail in. So this is what I start with. I tend to cut mine off. I don't like to let them hang out. It's just a, don't like, it's just a, my personal preference. But as I just showed you that I have the mill, what little, you see my picture of my little mill and all. Let me turn this thing around here. So basically I've got my, my iPhone on today. Basically what I'm doing, this is going to be a real quick, short video of what I'm doing, how I'm doing it. And hopefully this will give you some ideas if, you, if you've got your own machine shop, especially the guys in machining YouTube. This is pictures worth a thousand words. So I'm going to actually put this on my channel again. It may be a bit repetitious. That way too, uh, it kind of gets some people to think. I figure John Double Boost will probably he'll have a video on the one he cut down. And I'm going to go back and I'll go into one more quick detail. You notice, and I've said this several times in my videos, I use quarter 20 threaded rod for my adjusters. And I turn these here. My last video I showed making some of these. In fact, I have two more sitting here on the lathe just out of brass. And I just think brass is cool, looks cool. It's the only reason I use it. I mean, you could use, a, I got one out of a lot of them out of aluminum. You could make them out of steel and knurl them. But there's no need when you do this to try to use these bigger screws like this. Again, remember, you see me put these on and mount. All this does, and I'll, I'll remount this one and show you again. Turn the camera around, excuse me. And bring you down back on point. Uh, if you see, all this is doing is basically, I wanted to go back over here, and here it is. You notice I have a gap here. This one I happen to be, this is the inch and a quarter. Now, if you have a problem when you make these, and this, you, this mill will have a little bit milled off your corner. That usually works well. See, now here's, here's the three quarter that I got, just got recently off of eBay. You see how it sets. And I'll just, my favorite one, I'll put it back on for you. You see how much gap that is. Again, a lot of this can vary depending on your lathe and your setups. If you are doing this with the A size and have interference, you can always mill a little off the bottom. It doesn't hurt. So that again, that's just, you need to kind of fit that to your machine, what you have. 
and uh, whatever. Okay, so in closing, I'm going to put this holder up. Excuse me just a second. And um, uh, in closing, I just want to get back with you. You know, this is what we do. I mean, this is the way I've chose to do this. Uh, I am probably going to go ahead. I mean, I'm thinking about making one more. Actually, I have a trigon. I have that one in a holder I milled down in the past, and I'm using it, so I may not because unless I can find a holder cheap. So that's a lot of it, you know, um, being able to find them cheap. And it's it's just it's just a convenient way of basically using or reusing holders you can find maybe at good bargains or allowing you to use these larger inserts on your hobby lathe and you can get a better price on them again this is the main reason i've been a real real advocate of it i mean if you have a, a mill and a lathe it's not that hard you don't have to have a fancy dovetail cutter i just use as you see and i've showed you i just use commercial one one that like Randy Richards makes is so much nicer, but it's not necessary. You can get by with one, you know, just a high-speed steel one. Just take your time. You do 